Clark's Bushacre 2 beeswax. These are uh, real close to the uh, desert boots, Clark's Desert boots. Um, never owned a pair before. I've tried on a pair before, but never owned a pair until today. Um, these are, um, so what I understand, a little bit lighter leather than the um, uh, desert boots and a little more flexible. They have a different sole instead of the crepe. They have a, a, a more refined rubber sole. But um, what I want to do is I want to improve them for me. Um, a size 8 is what I have to wear for width. If I just get a medium boot, it'll fit me across. And my left foot fits pretty good. A little snug. The right foot is pretty snug right about in here. Um, but length is plenty long. So what I'm going to do, or my plan right now, is to remove this sole and then take um, and reshape this boot, put in a midsole, and then put in another put another sole on this um, that will make it more of a minimalist shoe. goal is to cut between the upper, just the dark brown, and this light midsole, and the midsole which is the light brown, and then that's glued to this um, sole. I don't care any way, shape, or form about keeping the midsole because I'm changing the entire shape of the toe. So I am going to get a blade in between and slowly cut these threads being careful several things one not to cut myself and two not to cut into the upper leather and give me a problem to have to fix later so I'm just going to slowly carefully like the, as possible gently get it started around on both sides so I can um, kind of kind of pull it back Just kind of rocking the blade back and forth to slowly and controllably get those seams to rip. I think I'm getting a little deep into the midsole. Nope, yeah, there's going to be some midsole stuck on there. Um, hopefully I can peel that off. Maybe I can be a little more precise once I get started around this corner. There we go. And you can just hear the threads cut. I'm just going to rip this. Now that I got this kind of like pull on it. I should be able to, yeah, right there, I'm getting a little deep. Okay, it's a, it's because of this here, this, um, there's an extra piece of leather laid in there from the heel counter. 
I'll make sure I don't cause any more problems for myself there. If you can see that. I'm getting plenty, plenty deep into that midsole, but that's okay because I should be able to just peel that off here in a few minutes. I'd rather do that than, than um, cut my upper. And I may regret here in a few minutes. Find out that that's really hard. Now we're just going to clean up these stitches. Should be able to get them to lift up and pull them out just like this all the way around. The bottom side, there's what we have. So these are built and the lining is a fabric. I think the desert boots have suede. This one has a fabric. But that's pulled down and then brought glued and then brought underneath the sole or this between the midsole. Um, some of that's still there. Some of it got cut. Um, and it isn't going to hurt anything because we're going to glue it, glue everything back down, and it's glued in here. Um, to get this toe to the shape I want, what I'm going to do is I already have a pattern for the shape I want my shoe. So I'm going to cut a midsole um, about. I'll take my pattern that I have and then I'm going to go looks like five probably five millimeters Probably six, so the thickness. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm measuring the from the outside of this leather is five millimeters, but it makes a bend. And this is well, one, two, almost three millimeters. So I'm going to go eight millimeters wider for my, my midsole than what I want the inside to be. And then I'm going to cut a piece of leather to set on my midsole the exact size that I want the midsole so I can then set this all together and make the toe come where it wants. This toe. Okay, this is my pattern for my um, insole. This is my foot shape that I want on my boot. And eight, roughly eight millimeters. So I'm just going to Go around here and mark it with this compass and then I'll be able to cut it out. And then put it onto a piece of my midsole, what I'm going to use for my midsole. Okay, this will be my midsole, the 
the smaller one, which is going to be my footbed on the inside of my shoe, inside of this part here. This is going to be what stitches down on my my shoe, my boot, my boot will stitch to this, and on the inside, this will set right up against the inside, like that, but it'll be leather, and that'll let me line this up real nicely around the side when I put it together and cement it. Before I this is a rubber midsole, um, SPM, it's four iron, which is, Probably a millimeter and a half, two millimeters thick. About two millimeters thick, probably. So this, these are going to be my midsole. It's going to be my insole. This is just some um, leather I have. This is about how you want it scuffed up. You don't have to get get it perfect, but you need it to have some place for the cement to get a hold of and hold on real good. So I'm just taking the this and my this kind of since this is cut and not precise, it's a little bigger than what. I really needed it to be, to be exactly what I think I need. Um, I'm just, I went along and just pretty much centered this on the, um, on my, um, with this, this on the top of that, and then drew around it so I can kind of hopefully, when I cement this down, get it pretty close. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Um, these are all laid out so I can put cement on them. I'm going to go ahead and take a piece of that same sanding paper. I just have a disc that's broken. And I'm going to come along here and I'm going to rough this up, clean this up, make sure it's got plenty of a place for the cement to um, stick to. Um, and I've spent some time working this toe um, to kind of break that, um, that paste that they put on that. Um, the toe to make it stiff and so you can see it's starting to it's going to come along and work out just fine so uh, wear one of these because that glue is bad for you
now that uh, I've got the soles on, midsoles on, um, not didn't exactly line up on the, every spot, but there's enough to sew to. And once I put my sole on there, and when we drew everything up, it will look as good as factory. At least, I'll think it will. I'm going to use this and this lacing needle. It's just an awl with a hole in it for a needle. It has a slot on one side, and it's round on the other. So what you or what I'm going to do is I'll take about a little over four um, links around. So we'll call that one. And there's two and I'm going pretty wide. Three and four. Um, that's going to be plenty, but I just as soon have more and throw it away as run out. So when this was sewn, they used a machine that does this. If I had that machine, um, it would just take a minute. To do each or less but I don't um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start here um, and start sewing so to do that run our thread through our needle I don't know if this is thread or not it might be string but it's waxed um, and it has that groove in there so you you start and you work the direction of the groove so I'm gonna start with the groove facing this way and, and this is the way I'm gonna work so I'm gonna start my first stitch right here through an existing hole I'm gonna try to go straight down and I'm gonna pull this back and I need to get this string pulled all the way through And then I'm going to leave the string on this side and pull the needle out. It's kind of hard to get that to come out of there. And then I'm going to pull this until it's about half on each side. So it's the same length, the top and the bottom is the same length. Now, this is our tail. We're going to call it our tail. Throw that over out of the way. And, again, our little groove is going to go this towards the back because that's the way I'm going to lace it. You could lace it the other way if you wanted, but it seems easier for me to go this way. So. We'll pull it down and I'm going to find the next hole where they already sewed push through and you can you can hook your finger to use it for leverage and then I'll pull back and you see it makes that loop right there and then you grab this and you make a little loop with your finger poke it through this hole, that loop right there I'll do it again when you pull this back it makes a loop on the and so then you just grab your tail and instead of going all the way to the end you can just grab it and poke it through reach down and grab it 
pull it all the way. Now you can pull this back and see what you've done is just wrap that string around it, the other string, and then you pull it until that knot right here comes down inside. Like that. You can pull it further and then give it a good tug on both sides and that puts the knot right in the middle where you can't see it, that loop. Um, and it would be better if you've got to leave it somewhere to leave, if you can see it, to leave it on the bottom side. Because now there's a pre-existing hole right there. I still have my slot facing to the direction I'm sewing. I'm going to poke this through. Take my finger. Push through. Pull it back. Again, take my loop. And poke it up through there. Get it up here out of our way. And pull it back until my needle's on this side. And then I'm going to pull on it until we get the knot down in the center. And then I give it a pretty fair tug. Not a tug, just a pull. And then that's what you have. And If you hold this string, um, a little bit of slack in it, like this, and then push it through the hole, it doesn't slide so much of the string through the eye of the needle. Because um, when you do that, it tends to fray the needle, or the thread. So, um, because it's sliding through that metal. Um, however, if you hold it tight like this and push it in, it tends to really pull that um, stitch tighter. But you can pull it tight with your fingers. Um, and I'd rather not fray the thread. Because it will break. Because I broke it right over here. So then all I did was just back up a stitch and start over and then tie a little knot there. Okay, we have one more stitch, and then we are back into our original hole, so I'm going to push into that original, our first hole, we'll finish stitch all the way around. Now I'm going to take one more stitch over here into the next spot and then I'm going to um, pull our string through. Or at least enough of it that I can tie. And 
And so now we have our tail on each piece on the inside and the sole. Just pull that down. Tie knot. And we had some left over, but not too much. And here's what we're looking like. I think it looks nice. Here's what they look like inside with that leather midsole. Doesn't that look nice? Thirty-six grit paper. We're gonna rough this up. We want this to stick really good. The bottoms are already sanded earlier. We sanded them up. So, as soft as this is, see how it's bowing right here? When we glue this down, we're going to have to be very careful to lay it in there and work it in so we have it nice and flat the whole way once we glue it onto this. So, we're going to have to work on that real careful. Like, But, anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and try to get some marks on here to figure out because when we put them together we want you know the shoe we want this in the center and we want that in the center and we want we basically want to try to keep the pattern the same so I'm going to try to figure that out here okay, what that. I've done is I've marked on the back of my boot with a little bit of pencil the center, and I've marked the center on my sole, on the front and the back. And I've measured, and I also marked the center on the front of the shoe with a little white mark. And I line that up with that. I've already done this one over here, and then I traced around it with a pen. Um, I measured the center right here you can see there's a mark here and here this is where that vibram emblem is and so I've lined it up with these marks here or these so it's straight and I lined up my center on this line here and up there so I'm going to go ahead and trace around this one with my pen um, as where I want to put this together. So I'll, I'll show you what I'm going to do. Oh, so I'll mark it. Okay, I'm going to put glue on here, on the bottom of here, and glue on there, or seam out, and then set it down and work it from the back to the front and stay in those lines, hopefully. Then I should, be able, if I do the other one the same, we should be good. So I'm going to get some glue on there, and then we'll put it down.
when we widen these boots, we pulled a lot of material back and it makes it a little bit tight across here, usually in here. So <clears throat> I have just a regular shoe stretcher. <clears throat> it's one for a wider shoe. And what I do is I put it inside and then I'm going to stretch the leather across here to, or I have done this already, to um, loosen this up. And I also um, took my Dremel and kind of touched up around the sole so it's as smooth as, well, it's smoother, looks nicer. And I'm gonna just brush the. Need, this doesn't need to be in there any longer, but this is what I used. Um, it just, when you screw it in, it gets wider. So you can move it around wherever you want. I've got one of these. It's just a little edging tool. You can see that. I think I'm going to just run around, kind of clean that ragged edge up just a little bit. This is edge dye, a Febrings edge dye. Um, it's just a alcohol base, I think, or water base, I'm not sure. Brown dye, and it's for putting on the edges of soles. So, you can see where this is light at the top, above my midsole. So I'm just going to Come along with a little brush and keep it off of my white sole. And I'm just going to go around and hopefully it will soak in. Straight from eBay, brand new in the box, Clark's Brush Acre 2 boots, new with defects, um, $24.99, that included shipping. Now we have a pair of minimalist boots, very flexible. Um, very lightweight and Elvis sole, white Elvis sole and a midsole is a rubber uh, midsole and then inside is a leather insole. <clears throat> 